Hello and welcome back to Minecraft Mine Connolly's All The Mods 9, Bison Time. So before we get started on today's episode, between this and last time, what I've been doing is going around and slowly upgrading all of our areas to level 5. We've got the materials now from the end, so there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting all of our buildings up to level 5. So let's jump in and see what's changed. So number one, we come over here to the retail district and there's the statue of Mary on the left. So all of these buildings were level three on the right and the insulates, I believe, I think were, were level two. And it's a pretty cool looking area. The decorations we have here are fine. We're not gonna change those, but take a look at this now. So this is what this place looks like at level five. The walls and the guard towers, they're all level five. We brought them up to the maximum level. So that's given us loads and loads of extra space to build in our colony. But that's not all. The flower shop over here, this is level five too. Man, look at those glass roofs on the greenhouse section on the right. That's amazing. There's also the mini mystical site that comes with the flower shop. And that's also level five and looking pretty good. Then over here on the left, we have the glass blower's hut. This has been raised to level five. And what that does is it gives us a whole bunch of extra furnaces to do more glass blowing. We've got the bakery at level five and we've changed the windmill on top of that to be a create windmill. And of course the Fletcher's hut, this is level five too. But as we sweep over to the insulate, these have had a massive upgrade all the way from level two to five, including the courier huts that are now like mini wagons. They look really cool. And that's both insulate up to level five. They look amazing and this has increased the amount of dudes we can have in our colony massively. Now we didn't stop there. As we come over here to these guard towers and walls at the back of the colony, you can see they've had a bit of a glow up themselves. These are all level five as well. Plus we added some mahogany trees and some paths some roses and some fences over there on the left as you walk up to the retail district. But there's also room to grow here as well. There's a rough area next to the water that we could maybe put some fishermen's huts, I don't know. But speaking of fishermen's huts as well, this one here is level five now. It gets that massively cool tower on top of it that looks really cool. Also the restaurant at level five and the town hall at level five now. Now level five doesn't change too much on the exterior of the town hall, but I'm keen to see what the inside looks like now. And also the streetlight decorations, they've been upgraded to level three, which is the maximum level for those. Well, okay, so what are we gonna be doing this episode? Well, what I wanna do is build the cathedral or at least get it started. And to do that, we're gonna have to set up a level five builder's hut near to where the cathedral's gonna be built. So as we come over here past the university, you can see we've expanded this section over here and plonk down another level five builder's hut. Looking pretty good. It's very close to the mountain where we wanna build the cathedral and honestly having another builder's hut over on this side of the colony is gonna be good. And it brings our total builders now to five, which is a lot of builders. Anyway, let's jump in and get started with the cathedral. Right, so here we go. The colossal build is gonna commence. We're gonna try and build the cathedral now this is an absolutely incredibly massive build that's going to take our builders a massive amount of time anyway that's why we set up a level five builder over by the university because it's very close to the mountain where we want to put the cathedral now you don't need a special hut block to put down the cathedral because it's a decoration so it should go up without a hitch but one thing we are going to need to do is get a decent bird's eye view of what we're looking at so what we're going to do is nerd pole up, build ourselves a nice big platform, and then use this bird's eye view to put down the cathedral. Now this would be much, much easier if I did have some kind of flying. Whether it's through Ars Magica or a jetpack or something like that, that would make things so much easier. Okay, so here we are at the top of our nerd pole. Now there's another thing you're going to have to notice. We've put a few level 5 guard towers in strategic locations to make sure we actually have a big enough boundary to put our cathedral in. Now we might end up overlapping this guard tower over here, but I think that should be fine. We've got the area now as it is, as you can see, a huge area for us to work with. And if this doesn't fit a cathedral in, well, I don't know what will. So let's take a look. It's down here in, I believe, Mystic. Yeah, here we go, the cathedral. And let's see if we can get this placed. 
Now this definitely looks like it's the front, it's got the church logo right there, and yeah, that looks like the main front door. Yeah, this is definitely the front of the building, so let's see if we can slot this into position now on top of this mountain. Now, ooh. We want to make sure it's not overlapping these houses, that's very important. So we'll bring it down like this, and I do think we do have enough area here. Not too shabby. Bring it forwards a bit, and we kind of want this as far forwards as we can kind of get away with. Yeah, do you know what? This actually looks like the perfect space. Yeah, we need to make sure we set the right builder. Oh wait, in fact, we'll leave the template here because it's time to recruit a builder in our new builder's hut. Oh, whoa. And let's go and pick the perfect dude to be our builder for the cathedral. Now we've got a lot of people in the schools, so we should have some good students to pick from. So here we go, this is the man, the legend, that's going to be building our cathedral. His name is Jordan Thundercrotch. Again, thank you to my Patreon members and my YouTube members who have contributed their names to the colony. Now he's going to get going once we press go on this template. Oh man, it looks amazing up there, it's going to be so cool. Now, since the university is level 5, we've also done one more bit of research that's really going to help out with this build, and I'll show you what that is in a second. But we'll press go on this. Here we go. Tick the box. And we're going to set Jordan Thundercrutch on this. Now, the materials are really, really, really wild. Round, gilded, blackstone. Crazy. There's also some crying obsidian. Wow, warped signs, blocks of gold panel, but we have gone around and gathered all of this stuff now, so we should be okay. Now he will get going on this as soon as he can, but let's go over to the uni now and I'll show you exactly what we've done that's going to speed up our builders. So here we go, into technology. Now the way these researchers work is you can unlock these researchers at level 5, but there is one special level 5 research that you can only do one of. Only one max level research can be unlocked per branch, right? So the one we've gone for down technology is heavily loaded. This plus loaded is going to give our civilians a huge amount of extra slots. In fact, if we go over here and right click on Rogue Salazar, right away. oh my god, look at the size of this guy's backpack. He's got double the space. This is going to mean our builder can put loads more materials in his backpack. He can build more in one trip. It's going to be much, much better, much, much quicker. Now, also, the build style we're going to be using on the builder is going to be the Hilbert Curve. Because I do think for big buildings, it is by far and away the most efficient choice. However, if you think it's not, if there is, in your mind, a better choice, do let me know. Now, as you can see, getting the University to Level 5 has fixed that black concrete that was plaguing our paths. Not all of it, there's some black concrete here, it looks like, but most of it has been fixed. Anyway, we have the decorations set to be built. All of our guys have all the recipes required to make the university. So, I do believe we should be able to set the time lapse in action and watch the cathedral go up. So here we go, the Cathedral of Byzantine. It was supposed to be a pretty simple build. Yeah, sure, it's huge, but our builders are pretty amazing now. So I was hoping this would be a lot quicker than it is. But it turns out it's a pretty slow process, especially when it comes to digging out the area to prepare for the cathedral. Now there's a bit of oil around and we had to remove all of the trees and the forests and the shrubberies because that's something that really does bog down the builders and fills up their backpack with a load of chaff that they don't want or need. And you know what, everything was going great until it wasn't. So midway through this, we had a little bit of a calamity. Now you might see some lava over here and that's going to become important in just a minute, because you see this guy right here, Jordan Thundercrotch? Well, he's dug his last block because boom, he fell into that pit of lava, and the gravekeeper couldn't even grab his grave because he got burned alive. All of his stuff was incinerated. Anyway, after replacing the builder, things could get back to work. However, after like two or three hours, the builder still hadn't finished digging out the area. So it's become clear to me that the cathedral is going to be a build over time. It's not a quick fix, and time-lapsing it, well, that would take an entire weekend. Luckily enough, there are still cool and interesting things we have to do around the colony. 
Now, number one of those is going to be getting more dudes. Now that we've got more insulate up to level five, we should have loads more room for dudes. And if you come over here to the university, you'll be able to see that under civilian, we've done the last population increase over here, city, and that gets us to a max citizen count of 400. Now, we could go to 500 if we up the config, but for now, I think 400 is going to be okay. It's up from 150, which was the last tech we did. Now, we've also got all of your Patreon and YouTube member names that you guys have submitted via the posts on Patreon and the YouTube community page. So it's about time I hopped on over to the tavern and rustled up some new dudes because we're going to need loads and loads and loads of guards. All right, that's what I'm talking about. A backpack full of materials. We're going to need to get dudes in. So let's just start the ground running. Ivana Demon Breath Sunflowers, super easy. I'll just get some of these in my backpack so they're easier to give to a dudes. Bada boom, bada bing. Let me begin. Here we go. Boom, Ivana, welcome to the colony. Now, all of your names have been added to the list and some of you guys have said, oh man, I haven't seen my name. And that is unfortunate, but unfortunately, the names list is so huge that, you know, it can take a while for your names to appear. Kapulka Offbeats. Enchanted books we can't quite afford. Pernicious, pernicious, pernicious dawn. 51 gold. Well, worth it, I suppose. Kayoshi Caldonia. Boom. I don't have the items. Wait, yes, I do. I've got the baked potatoes. Oh, 69. Wow, greedy. Who's going to eat 69 baked potatoes? Man, that is quite the ask. Who else is around? Oh, hello. Who's this over here? Somebody hiding behind the tavern. It is... Ah, of course, Timmy Braven. I'll take care of it. But he wants enchanted books as well. Man, enchanted books are a real pain in the bum. I really wish colonists didn't request that because it's just really awkward to carry around enchanted books in your backpack. So what about down here? Who's this dude? It is, oh, a new dude. Leonard Stoney, here we go. Boom. And welcome to the crew. Now we're going to wait for the tavern to recharge, but also while we do that, let's go and take a look at our brand new level five area. So like I said, the town hall is level five, but it doesn't really do much to the outside. The inside, however, is looking pretty cool. But again, nothing crazy going on in here. It is just a standard level five building. Next to it, though, the restaurant. Now the restaurant by the docks, the harbour side one behind the church, that's also level five. So you will have had a taste of that a bit of a sneak peek, but Seldasake still holding the front line against our hungry, hungry horses. The fisherman's hut being level five is pretty cool. It adds this tower that you can actually climb up. Looks very awesome. And of course, those guard towers over there, level five. Now, like I said, I reckon we could probably squeeze in a couple of extra fishermen's huts here. We're not going to, though, because we really don't need any more fish. We've got food overload here on the colony. There's no way we're ever going to need any more. But if you can think of something else we could put here on the edge by the water, do let me know. Now, the insulators at level five, these things are beasts, but you've been inside there. You've seen what they look like. It's more of the same for the most part. The Fletcher's Hut at level five. We've got Gen Godzilla in here, making sure our dudes are hooked up with all the finest bows and arrows money can buy. Now we've used Create to create the windmill on top of the bakery, but it's just for show, so don't worry about that. It doesn't do anything, it's not functional. However, the bakery itself, now that it's level five, this unlocks a load of cool, interesting things. Every level this gets, it gets new recipes. And at the moment, wow, look at this. It can do cookies, raw pumpkin into pumpkin pie, cake batter into cake, bread dough into bread. But it does need a fuel. So we're gonna make sure it's got regular coal as well as charcoal. Now the glass blower's hut, what kind of things can this guy do now? Well, like I said, he gets access to more smelteries when he gets higher level. Oh, was that a spider? And basically in mine colonies, if there is a furnace in the recipe blueprint for a building, it will count as something the work can smelt. Now, what that doesn't mean is you can add your own furnaces after the fact. It only matters if they're there when the building is built. So you can't just fill this thing with, uh, with smelteries with furnaces and soup up your glass production speed. But who is our guy over here? Oh, nobody. We don't have a glass blower. Well, it's time to hire someone lickety split. Who do we want as a glass blower? I guess the last one might have died in like a raid. 
whoa, look at this, Kayoshi Caldonia, amazing. And I think that's one of the fresh hires that we just got over at the tavern. So good to see him in a job already. And of course, the flower hut over here and the mystical site. The mystical site doesn't do much. It looks pretty cool, but all it's really there for is to give your colonists a happiness buff. But the flower shop now has all of these plantables. Shadow Fox Longstaff, he is our flower shop guy and he is, he is doing really well over here, getting us all the flowers we need for our builds. But as far as upgrades go, that's about it for now. Next up, I really want to see the hospital up at level 5. I think that's going to look really beautiful. Also, the church. I reckon the church is going to look incredible at level 5, so I can't wait to see that. And also majorly important, the warehouse being level 5 is vital, as well as some of these crafting buildings. Because a lot of the level 5 research is locked behind these buildings being level 5. And it's always good to see our starter boat here right in the middle of the colony. Thinking back to episode 1, this is where it all began, putting down this supply ship. And it's amazing to think and see how the city has grown since then. We've got a real sprawling metropolis over here, it's fantastic. Man, and Molly Moo Mizu, one of our OG couriers, is incredibly quick and incredibly efficient. Really good to see. But as the sun sets on the colony, it's time to think about what our next series is going to be as well. And you know what, I'm thinking about going back to all the mods 9 in a bit more of a traditional sense, but also what I really want to do is check out all of the magic mods that all of the mods 9 has to offer. I'm thinking like Ars Nouveau, oops, which is kind of ironic because we just walked past a Drigme. But also, yeah, there's a whole bunch of magic mods in all the mods 9 that I've never really taken a look at, like iron spells and spell books, all kinds of things we can do. So I think that'll be exciting to set up a brand new magical compound, basically like a Minecraft base for wizards. But let me know how you feel about that in the comment section. It is going to be a sad day to say goodbye to this colony. However, if you do want to get the world download, it is available to Patreon members on our Discord, so you can look there for details on how you can get your hands on this pretty sweet colony once we're done. Because there's still room to grow, and if you want to take this colony into your own world and grow it and put your own spin on it, decorate it, maybe even make it twice the size, then you are more than welcome to. Oh my, oh my god! What the hell? A huge horde of raiders, but not just one, four hordes of raiders are coming! Oh my god, uh, and they're mummies! <laughs> what the hell, mummies? Why? We're nowhere near a desert. Where are they coming? Oh, oh my god, and they're coming from all over. Northeast, but also southwest, and northeast, and northeast. Oh my god, well we're gonna need some spies to get through this. Number one, let's sleep past the night so we can fight these guys in daytime. Oh, it's the flamingo head. Number two, over to the barracks, I've got some gold in my backpack. Let's pay some spies to see where these guys are hiding. Here we go, the barracks building, hire some spies. Boom, let's see where they are. So here we are at the cathedral grounds. The mummies should be somewhere around here. And also because we've hired some spies, we should be able to see them through the ground. Now our colony expands out really far this way. In fact, if we go to journey map, yeah, now they'll usually spawn on the outskirts. So we're thinking somewhere around here is where all the mummies are spawning. That's quite far away. Time to rally the guards and get them over here. So boom, rally the guards. 40 guards are answering our call. Man, that's a veritable army. Now also, because this is a lot of dudes, I think I might have to help out. And luckily enough, we've got this amazing void core that casts this amazing spell that we pilfered from the end. Okay, so where are these dudes? I've got to keep looking at the map because they could be anywhere. They might- Oh my god, look at this! They're coming from all over! Oh, they're coming down here! They're, they're hitting the military district, but they're also hitting the cathedral. Oh man, where are we going to go first? Well, the guards are coming as well. All these guys are climbing the hills. Oh man, but we've got to go down to the military district because it looks like they've broken through the walls. Oh man. Oh, there's loads of them. Look at this. Absolutely tons and tons of mummies. Here we go. Okay, let's take them out. Where are my guards? Come on, guards. Rally to me. To me, to the banner. Oh, here they go. Yes, the guards are coming and... Oh my god, there are so many mummies, and they're so spread out as well. This isn't one huge force. It's loads and loads of little pockets of mummies everywhere. Get them, lads. Oh. Okay, time to throw down some of these void cores. 
Okay, it doesn't do a huge amount of damage, but when they're all clumped up, I reckon this will be really useful. Here we go. Are they still chasing? Yeah, here we go. Nice. And there's no friendly fire on, so I can't actually damage my dudes. Oh my god, what a raid. What a raid indeed. This is insane. This is also really good, though. Our guards are leveling up like crazy from this raid. Oh, they're up there. How are we going to get those guys? Oh, I can swim. Here we go. Whoops. Oh, they're tough. These guys are tough. My guard's going crazy down here on these mummies as well. Go on, dudes. Get them. Okay, so we're holding the military district quite well, but they are getting through over here. Oh my god, they're raiding near the church. Phileas Wolf Dragon is in trouble. Oh my god, okay, so we're going to disband the rallying banner because we need our guards to spread out. Oh my god, the Undertaker. Who's going to get the graves? Dismiss the guards, and oh my god, it's our dog. Barcus Aurelius. Come on, we need your help. Hop to it. Now try not to die. Aha, looks like this is the leader. We're going to whip out the special, special tool. And go to town on this dirtbag. He's got 122 health. That's crazy. But he's down. Oh, Barkus, you laid in the finishing bark, didn't you, my friend? Yeah, now hide here. It's not safe. That's right, you'll be safe here. Oh my god, Teddy Ronebone, the chicken herder. No! Oh, they're over by the chickens again? Oh, there's dudes everywhere. Okay, where's the biggest concentration of dudes? Probably up by the university. Let's go. Here I come, swim into action. That's right, scum. So they've got weird shields made out of kind of like mummy bandages. Now a bandage shield doesn't sound too effective to me. Boom, nice shot there from the druid. Oh no, strongborn snowman. This has been a night of casualties. Oh my god, look at this. Chicken herder, student, undertaker, and druid have now all been taken out. Oh, there's loads of dudes here. And there's a second a second pharaoh. Oh, ancient tome. Let's get this pharaoh. Shut him down. Oh my god, this pharaoh has 400 health, but I'm hitting for 80? Have I got buffs? jump boost, but no other buffs. That's weird. Maybe he's just weak to my sword. Oh no! A Sagi Peno tax. That's over at the harbour side. Oh yeah, there's some dudes over there. There we go. Now these mummies generally have about 100 health. Oh, thanks, Jordan. He gave me strength. Ah, very cool. Bam. Lights out, son. Okay, so that's the top mummy's raid completely. Oh, there's a pharaoh. One of the leaders. Maybe if we take him down, it's going to finish the raid. Maybe a pharaoh is worth a large chunk of the bar. So, boom. Wow. Oh, the damage I'm doing to this guy. Four raiders left. Okay, we're getting them. We're whittling these guys down. Slowly but surely. Well, do you know what? With only two raiders left, I feel like we've basically defeated the raid. So on that note, I reckon we're going to end this episode. What I'm going to do is see if I can get the rest of the cathedral time-lapsed up so you can see that big building get completed. I'm also going to go around and see if I can tidy up the remainder of the buildings around our colony, get them all to level 5, because I'd really like to see the military district finished, but also the industrial district up to level 5 as well. That's going to help out with a lot around the colony. So I've been Shin. A massive thank you for watching this episode. Do not forget to hit like and subscribe right this second. It really does help a lot. And until next time, take care.